Hello. So I recently played with Microblocks, which is another block coding, free block coding software. I downloaded it on my Mac. I'm told that it can work in the browser on Chromebooks, so that is good. Their website is microblocks.fun. Uh, you get there and it's going to tell you a little bit about them. Microblocks is not just for the micro bit. It is written generically or kind of openly uh, for many of the boards that are out there. So you're going to download one software for all of them or open one browser for all of them. You know, they've got their nice little quick start guide that you would want to play with. Oop, where I go? There we go. Quick start guide that walks you through some things. And they also have some of these activity cards um, that you would pick which the ones you want to play with. For example, let's look at sensors. They tell you how to work with the sensors that are built in. And as you notice, this one's talking about the micro bit. So I think that they're, I think they're kind of focused on the micro bit, but letting it pretty open. Uh, let's see if it talks about others. Nope, those are just all micro bit ones. So you got a quick start guide, you got download, quick start activity cards, board guide, you know, wiki, different things to fiddle with. So now let's peek at, let's find the rabbit and open micro blocks. So we've got our blocks available here. Then we got our coding window here. So here's what's basically pops up when you open micro blocks. So a couple of output. There's set user LD on the micro bit. That's the top middle one. It's a default from, I think from um, Arduino ideas. Say actually just say it says right here in the window. It doesn't actually say anywhere else. There's no board connector right now. Graph is the, you can you can drop some variables into here. Obviously, same with say. Um, the graph is paired with this graph thing up here, so you got to remember to bring that down when you want to graph things because that's where it's going to graph. You know, inputs. A lot of things have you know two buttons, timers times uh, the pins everything's going to have pins again that's what i say it's kind of generic control kind of looks like you know scratch kind of things amazingly because you know people uh, work on multiple projects operators basic math stuff the thing to notice like on the the less than greater than the equals there are no drop-down menus for these. These are just individual ones. And other block coding, there's a drop-down menu. You pick the one you want. So you now it's you just pick the block you want. There's not one block for all four of these. You got a nice little not block. You know they got the these the the, the button the green the on the off kind of things. This button to use for some ideas. An and and an or which is nice when you get to some logic stuff. Your basic add variables, data I haven't fiddled with to really find what it does. And my blocks are functions. And for the most part, you're gonna use command blocks. You're gonna set a whole set of commands um, in a function block, a string of commands, and it's gonna make something happen. The reporter block is also a function, but it's a set of, com a set of codes, a set of commands, a set of, a lot, set of blocks that are going to really pr pretty much report a number back. And then you get to choose from some libraries that are easily available. Tone for sound, music, servos, scrolling, like the microbit has that uh, the 5x5 LED, radio is a microbit, NeoPixels, LED display, again, it's a microbit kind of thing, and your basic sensors. And even in here, there are some other ones that you might want to play with. Sound prism, little support. You know, you're going to have to look through and see which ones of these you might want to add for a project. 
Sensing seems to be an obvious one. Uh, let's see, distance sensors. If you have an HCSRO4 ultrasound distance sensor, which is the basic distance sensor you're going to use, there's a, and I used that one and it worked, worked well. IR remote um, is for infrared remotes. And there's got to be something here for, I think this was like an, a passive infrared sensor. I haven't tested that one yet because I don't have any infrareds. Um, what other libraries might you be? Uh, the Calliope, the Circuit Playground, if you've got those. Finch, Hummingbird, Buttons, maybe. Uh, six capacitive buttons in the ceiling. Oh, it's for a special board. Yeah, those are those pretty much. Pretty much work with this one and probably a couple in here that you would add. Um, language you can change, obviously. Update firmware on board. You're going to need to do that um, right away to get it to read because one of the big things about Microbox is it's going to be live on the board. Whatever you put in here is going to happen on the board right away. It automatically writes to it. So that's also something you have to be careful about. Show advanced blocks adds a co communication block into the uh, set of blocks. And I haven't fiddled with that yet. Again, I just started playing with these and looking at hide advanced blocks. Now, here's the important thing. If you have a, a micro bit, it's got something on it, you can open from board. Right now, you have to do this before you plug the micro bit in. If I were to plug a micro bit in right now from here, it would write a blank program to the micro bit immediately. Here's what's supposed to happen. If I click open from board, and they're working on making this work better and easier. If I click open from board, and it says, okay, plug in board, and I plug in a board, it is supposed to put the code that I have into here. Ta-da! Like that. So there's the code that I have on the board. And it also pulled up the couple of libraries that I already had there. Now, if you just plug a uh, micro bit in and, and don't care about reading the code, it should automatically fill a couple of the basic libraries, like the sensors and the display. So here's the code that I have on my board. So that's nice for sharing, but again, you gotta remember to click the open from board before you plug the micro bit in. As I said, I think they're working on that. Now, your basic display stuff, you know, declare display, plot, unplot, display character. Um, they don't have all the the special icons like make code has, but you make your own icons on here. It's not a big deal. It's a five by five array. And then the scrolling ones, we got words, you got text, you got stop. And again, pretty much you're always going to want to use sensors. So tilt, X, Y, Z, acceleration, light level, temperature, and tone. Tone, play note, octave. You can change the octave, so that's a neat little thing. How long you play it for, MIDI key, frequencies, how you're going to play it for. So those are some nice ideas let's see we already have tone or we don't have servo so let's look at servo set servo on whatever pin to whatever degree I can move this over set servo to speed and that's going to be for a continuous rotation servo so we got a degrees for an angular servo and the continuous rotation servo setting speed and let's look at, let's see, we have scrolling radio because the micro bits will communicate to each other. You got your pins for radio there. I haven't really ever played with radio much yet, or at all, actually. So, in the future, obviously. NeoPixels, that's really important to me, is to have a NeoPixel thing there. Attach, how many NeoPixels, whatever pin. This is kind of an automatically set for something that has 10 you know, pixels, and I think that's a Circle Playground Express. 
I was hoping that if I changed this number to like 20 or 30 for a, a strip of LEDs, that I could change this out, this out to 30, and that didn't happen. But oh well. Set all nail pixels. Uh, you got the color RGB down here. It's got a uh, this nice little, you know, pick the color. Can scroll through. Can drag through. Now, color picker is a nice little thing. I also think the RGB is a nice little thing. That's good to teach kids that. Let's see uh, what else we got. Uh, radio NeoPixel LED display we already got. Basic sensors we already got. Oh, okay, let's go with the uh, distance sensor. I know that's a obvious one that people are going to use. And yeah, that's all. It, it's one block. Where's the trigger and where's the echo? Um, the nice thing for the and I don't have a distance sensor plugged in, but let's do this. Um, say. So kind of like for debugging purposes, if I had if I had something on there, like if I had my distance a distance sensor plugged in, I could click on here and it would be reading what the distance is. Sorry, I didn't plug that in, but in order to plug in a distance sensor, I've got to plug in an extension board to get. Um, actually, I don't have to. I could use pins uh, one and two, I guess. I haven't played with that. I usually do it on an extension board because a lot of distance sensors want five volts and the micro bits only, you know, three volt kind of thing. So I just automatically don't do it without an extension board that can get me five volts. But again, here's the, the say thing. It's going to say it here. So I just dropped in a variable. Um, oh, I can look, we can look at the graph now too. So graph. Uh, let's see, we've got a thermometer on the uh, sensor, so I can graph temperature. And if I just click on this, it'll it'll graph it, I think. Yeah, it will. But obviously, if I put it in a forever block, when started, forever, graph the temperature. Ta -da. So there's some things with microbits. Again, one of the biggest things is that it's going to automatically write live to your uh, microbit from the micro box. That's also the tricky thing that if you plug a microbit in with a blank code open, it's going to write a blank code to your, to your microbit. So something to explore. Enjoy.